Hydroxycut is one of the most popular weight loss supplements in North America. In the past, it has also been directly linked to multiple cases of acute liver injury, including one fatality. And as a result, their formulation has gone through some changes over the years in an attempt to stop these cases. Unfortunately, this has not stopped the problem, and Hydroxycut is still causing serious side effects to this day. But how effective is Hydroxycut for weight loss, and how do you know if it's safe for you to use? We're going to create a series of videos that looks at the whole Hydroxycut family of products. So in this video, let's take a look at Hydroxycut Hardcore to see if it's worth your money, see if we can replicate it with a cheaper and safer alternative, and give it an overall rating. Let's take a look at the ingredients. Here are the doses per capsule. The recommended dosing is two capsules two times a day, so that's a total of four per day. This is one of the more, quote, advanced versions of Hydroxycut. In Canada, the formulation is a little different, and the recommended dosing is three capsules two times a day, so a total of six per day. The overall key differences in the ingredients are that the American version has L-theanine, yohimbine, and green coffee bean extract, while the Canadian version has coleus for scoli, some additional fatty acids, and a few additional amino acids. We're going to focus on the American version, but I'll make some side notes to cover the Canadian version as well. By the way, if you want to hear my review of any of the other Hydroxycut family of supplements, I'll link those videos down below in the description when they come out. Now you may notice that the doses for some of the ingredients are missing. This is because they're hidden behind what is called a proprietary blend. Proprietary blends allow supplement companies to avoid listing the exact amount of each ingredient within the blend. They can list an effective ingredient but only have trace amounts of it and you wouldn't be able to tell since the dose isn't listed. Some supplements will even use these blends to hide very low doses within their ingredient lists. If they're hiding the actual dose from you, it's much more difficult to determine whether you're getting an effective dose. With that in mind, let's take a look at the Canadian version of ingredients real quick. Although we don't know the exact doses of some of the unlisted ingredients, we can figure out an approximate dose. How can we figure this out? Simple, with math. The Canadian version of Hydroxycut Hardcore gives us a total weight of everything combined. So according to the ingredient list, it's providing 2,214 milligrams of supplement when you take six pills. We can simply subtract all the ingredients with known doses to find out how much is remaining. So that's 2,214 milligrams minus 500 milligrams of coleus for scoli minus 400 milligrams of caffeine and so on. That leaves us with a combined dose of 8 milligrams for the remaining 5 unknown ingredients. That's about 1.6 milligrams per ingredient for 6 pills. That's an average of 0.27 milligrams per pill. It's pretty safe to say that these ingredients with unknown doses are not contributing much at all to the supplement at such minuscule amounts. Now let's jump into the analysis. Whenever supplements add ingredients into their product, there are three very common issues with many of these ingredients. One is that the doses they use are often way too small to be effective. Two is that the types of extract they use are ineffective and don't contain much of the active compounds. And three is that the ingredient itself has not reliably shown any beneficial effect in humans. When we analyze all these ingredients, we're going to see which one of these issues they have. The vast majority of Hydroxycut supplements rely mostly on caffeine for their effects. Hydroxycut Hardcore leans heavily into this. Caffeine's effects on weight loss are mainly as an exercise aid to help people to increase the intensity and duration of their exercise. The American version of Hydroxycut Hardcore provides at least 530 milligrams of caffeine a day with their max dose, and probably more due to the undeclared caffeine content in the green coffee beans. This is the equivalent of about 9 shots of espresso. That is a ginormous dose. The FDA recommends that healthy adults shouldn't be consuming more than 400 milligrams of caffeine per day. It's just not very safe. The Canadian version provides slightly less at 400 milligrams of caffeine, which is about six to seven shots of espresso. But it's important to note that having more caffeine in a supplement is not necessarily a good thing for weight loss and can be harmful for some people. Caffeine affects different people differently, and the ideal dose of caffeine is highly dependent on the individual. Some people function better with smaller doses, and some people function better with larger doses, but having more caffeine doesn't necessarily mean more energy or better exercise. 
In fact, too much caffeine in a more sensitive individual is counterproductive to their weight loss and exercise efforts and just leads to more negative side effects like anxiety or heart palpitations, which could negatively affect your ability to exercise properly. So whenever you use caffeine as an exercise aid, you need to find the right dose for you, not the highest dose possible. L-theanine and L-tyrosine are both amino acids that might be helpful with improving cognitive function and focus while under stress, particularly in combination with caffeine. They're both common ingredients in workout supplements, and although they aren't going to help you with your weight loss or improve your strength, they might make it easier for you to focus during your workouts. It's hard to determine what doses hydroxycut hardcore is using, but I can definitely say it doesn't have enough tyrosine. Cayenne extract is essentially a crude form of capsaicin. I've talked about capsaicin for weight loss before and I'll link the video down below, but to summarize, capsaicin might be slightly helpful for weight loss when used as a spice in food, when you can taste it, since the burning sensation might make people eat less and drink more water. But as a supplement, and especially at the tiny dose found in hydroxycut hardcore, it's totally useless. Green coffee bean extracts and the chlorogenic acid they contain appear to have some minor effects on fat metabolism. Green coffee bean extracts also contain some unlisted caffeine, so the total amount of caffeine you're getting in the American version is likely even higher than the listed 530 milligrams per day, as if that wasn't high enough. Realistically speaking, if green coffee bean extract does help someone to lose weight, it's mostly because of the caffeine content, but the chlorogenic acids may have some smaller secondary effects on fat metabolism. Regardless, the overall amount of weight typically lost is pretty modest, with people losing on average 2-4 to four pounds over a few months. That's not very impressive, unfortunately. Again, I've talked about green coffee beans for weight loss before, and I'll link the video down below in the description. Yohimbine is a herb that's been traditionally used to enhance sexual and athletic performance. It doesn't really have good evidence that it actually does any of those things, nor does it have good evidence that it will help with weight loss. There are some theoretical uses of transferulic acid as an antioxidant or to help support cognitive function, but at the moment there isn't any actual evidence that supplementing it in humans can be helpful whatsoever. L-methionine and L-leucine are amino acids that are sometimes added into supplements that claim to support athletic performance. There's no evidence that these particular amino acids are especially helpful for exercise performance beyond other general amino acids. The same would hold true for the additional L-proline and L-carnosine found in the Canadian version. Nevertheless, the doses of all of these amino acids found in hydroxycut hardcore is way too small to do anything anyways, and their addition is mostly cosmetic. The Canadian version also includes some fatty acids like medium chain triglycerides and oleic acid. Some workout supplements add these in to provide a source of energy during workouts. They can sometimes provide an easy to burn non-carbohydrate fuel source, especially for those on keto or low carbohydrate diets. I've talked about MCTs for weight loss and exercise before and I'll link the video down below for more info, but essentially MCTs are just an efficient fatty acid fuel source to burn, and hydroxycut hardcore is not even providing enough to be helpful during a workout anyways. Finally, the Canadian version has coleus for scoli, which actually has been researched for obesity, but was found to be no more effective than placebo for weight loss. So despite being one of the key ingredients in the Canadian version of Hydroxycut Hardcore, studies show that coleus for scoli is not effective for weight loss. When looking at safety, Hydroxycut products do not have a very good safety record. Before 2004, Hydroxycut used to contain ephedra, and there were reports of seizures in people taking these products. As a result, thousands of lawsuits were filed against the manufacturer of Hydroxycut, and in 2004, the FDA banned the use of ephedra in supplements. Hydroxycut then removed ephedra and reformulated their products. It was then that a number of serious side effects related to liver injury, including at least one fatality, was linked directly to Hydroxycut. Cut. The FDA then issued a warning in 2009 and recommended that consumers stop using Hydroxycut. Later in 2010, the FTC fined the makers of Hydroxycut for $5.5 million for falsely advertising that its supplements could help consumers lose weight. 
HydroxyCut then changed their marketing language to comply with the FTC and reformulated it again so that the primary active ingredient of their supplements was just caffeine. However, case reports continue to link HydroxyCut to other serious side effects like heart and gut issues. The abnormally high dose of caffeine in HydroxyCut likely continues to contribute to the case reports of serious side effects. So if you're sensitive to caffeine, have cardiovascular issues, suffer from anxiety disorders, or are taking other stimulant drugs like fentramine, you need to ask your doctor to see if it's safe to take. I would also avoid taking it in the evening or it might cause insomnia. And I would definitely not exceed the maximum dosage of taking two pills at one time or a max total of four pills a day. And even then, taking four pills a day might still be too much caffeine for safe use. It's also not safe for pregnancy or if you're breastfeeding. Taken together, HydroxyCut Hardcore is primarily an exercise aid and stimulant, mainly thanks to all that caffeine. They're trying to also add other ingredients that may help you to focus better while exercising, but the doses for many of its ingredients fall far short. So it may help you to exercise with greater intensity and focus, and if it does, you might burn more calories as a result. However, if you're not physically active or exercising seriously, just taking HydroxyCut Hardcore won't really have any benefit. Benefits. At the core of it all, the American version of HydroxyCut Hardcore is basically just a very high dose caffeine pill with some added L-theanine, green coffee bean, and yohimbine. The Canadian version is also a very high dose caffeine pill, but with just coleus for scoli added instead. The cost for either depends on which version you're getting. For the American version, each bottle costs $23, and there are 60 pills per bottle. At 4 pills a day, a month's supply is going to cost around $46. US For the Canadian version, each bottle costs $33, but there are 80 pills per bottle. At 6 pills a day, a month's supply is going to cost around $75. Canadian So the Canadian version is really not worth it in this case. Compared to if you were to just get caffeine tablets, that's around two to three dollars per month. L-theanine, that's also around two to three dollars per month. Green coffee bean extract, that's about eight dollars a month. Yohim bean extract, that's about two to four dollars a month. Or coleus for scoli, that's about four to five dollars a month. And you can essentially replicate what the American version of HydroxyCut Hardcore provides you for around fourteen to eighteen dollars a month, or what the Canadian version provides you for around six to eight dollars a month, just by supplementing the key ingredients individually. Rating HydroxyCut Hardcore by effectiveness for weight loss, I'm giving it a C. It basically works as an exercise aid, and taking it without increasing your exercise is not likely going to have much effect on your weight whatsoever. Rating it by cost, I'm giving it a C. It can be essentially replicated by getting individual ingredients at a cost many times less. Rating it for safety, I'm giving it an F. There are direct case studies of people experiencing serious side effects from taking hydroxycut, including one death. Also, taking over 530 milligrams of caffeine a day is totally unnecessary and asking for trouble. Overall rating, I'm giving it an F. I would recommend you stay away from it. Hi, I'm Dr. Brian Young. Do you think it's worth it? Let me know in the comments down below. And if you found this video helpful, please subscribe to the channel and leave me a like. Hit the notification bell to stay up to date and share this video with some you know can use the info.